are some of the highlights of the New York International Numismatics Convention Platinum Session Auctions. Of the several desirable South African coins on offer, surely the most elusive would have to be this strange 1898 three pence pattern, a coin which is usually minted in silver. And to be fair, this isn't really a pattern coin either. Story is a bit of a strange one, but comes down to this. An extremely wealthy and influential industrialist named Sammy Marx was granted the unheard of privilege to use the state mint for a single day. He used this opportunity to create 215 of these coins, which today have become known as the Sammy Marx Tickies. Most likely as a kind of personal presentation piece. This example here was graded by PCGS as MS63 and it sold at auction for $31,200. Even though there is a lively debate ongoing as to what should truly be considered as South Africa's first coins, the Krikwa Town tokens, the ZAR circulating coins, and this piece all being strong contenders for that title. But this 1874 Burgerspond is the first coin conceived of by a South African intended strictly for use within South Africa and struck from South African mined gold. This exquisitely high grade example of the fine beard variety of this coin graded as NGC MS65 sold at auction for $72,000. It is hardly an oddity to see rare British coins appear at these auctions, but any chance to see a coin of Edward VIII is one well advised to observe, as no coins bearing his image were ever issued for circulation in the United Kingdom, as he rather famously abdicated the throne before his coronation in order to marry the American divorcee Wallace Simpson. This pattern threepence coin from 1937 remains one of only a handful of examples that today bear his image. Graded by NGC as MS 64 and at auction it fell under the auctioneer's gavel for $100 hundred and forty four thousand dollars. The Adelaide Pound is amongst Australia's most famous coins, and along with the Holy Dollars and Sydney Sovereigns have become to define the early numismatic history of Australia. Created without royal warrant by the Government Assay Office to answer the dire need for a regular circulating coin created by the discovery of gold fields in places like Bathurst and Ballarat. This type of Adelaide Pound is slabbed by NGC with a grade of MS. 62 and at auction it raised $228,000. To the collector of British coins, especially copper coins, the 1933 penny is one of the greatest treasures one could possibly hope to attain. In fact, no coins were struck for circulation at all during that year, at least when strictly speaking addressing the penny, it appears as though only seven coins were especially minted for inclusion in year sets that were to be entombed in cornerstone or foundation stones of newly erected public buildings. Those include the University of London in Bloomsbury, St. Mary's Church of Hawksworth Wood, and the Church of St. Cross in Middleton. There are also two examples in the British Museum and the Royal Mint Museum, and at least another two examples in private collections today. Truly a once in a generation opportunity to acquire this fabled coin currently graded by NGC as MS63 Brown, which at auction's close had sold for $240,000. Austria is our next stop, and here an exceedingly rare and very large 25 ducat celebrating the installation of Franz Anton as Archbishop upon the death of his predecessor, Johann Ernst. The unusual size and clear care given to the striking of this coin indicates that it was likely to be presented to an important guest, royalty, or a high-ranking member of the church, perhaps. His reign is considered one of 
the golden ages of Salzburg, where much investment was made in architecture and the arts, particularly in the burgeoning Rococo style. Graded by NGC as MS61, it was sold at auction for $264,000. From there, we turn our attention towards the Netherlands and discover a remarkable patent Reichstalder struck in gold to the weight of 10 ducats. This provincial issue hails from the county of Zeeland and bears the date of 1682. No doubt originally struck as a presentation piece to some visiting nobility or dignitary or the other, given its astounding state of preservation. Searching known references only accounts for three to four of these dates known to exist. Graded by NGC as proof 64 plus, it sold at auction for $264,000. Queen Anne may not be one of the English monarchs that is romanticized or of which fantastic tales are told of their exploits. Certainly no Henry VIII or Elizabeth to be had here for sure. But in objective, if somewhat boring hindsight, her rule was a stable one. She oversaw the acts of union, strengthened the military, and laid much of the political and economic foundation that allowed Great Britain to become the dominant world power in the 18th and 19th centuries. Here we have an exceptional example of her five guinea coin dated 1705 and graded by NGC as MS61. At auction, this rarity was sold for $264,000. While we're talking about Anne, a rare gold presentation of her coronation medal, most frequently seen in silver, was also on offer. Here, Anne is presented in the form of Pallas Athena, perched upon a rocky shore, perhaps meant to be the Cliffs of Dover? She holds a gorgon shield and brandishes the thunderbolts of Jupiter. She towers over the savage, two-faced, serpentine-tailed creature with the faces of Louis XIV and the Jacobite claimant James Stewart, symbolically defending the kingdom from within and without, and of course not to mention the Protestant Catholic religious undertones that manages to permeate so much of this portion of history. Graded by NGC as MS63, this rare gold medal by John Croker was sold at auction for $50,400. Another phenomenal Australian coin on offer was the legendary 1853 Sydney Sovereign Pattern. Following the decree that Sydney would be the home of the first royal mint branch mint outside of Britain, these patterns for the Australian sovereign were prepared, with, as far as we know, only four coins struck. Of course, one is in the British Museum and two reside in the Royal Mint Museum, leaving this coin, presumably, as the only example in private hands. Graded by NGC as Proof 63 Ultra Cameo, it sold at auction for $312,000. Out of this amazing sale, one of the most anticipated lots was this outstandingly rare gold ingot from the Australian Gold Rush period. Although undated, these are known to have been cast in 1852, following the authorization of the Government Assay Office of South Australia to deal specifically with the new and sudden influx of gold into Adelaide and other parts of Australia from the gold fields. The varying weights and finenesses of these ingots proved simply impractical for trade, however, with this example hand-stamped as 23 carats with a weight of 10, indicating the penny weight, a contemporary value of one pound, 17 shillings, and one and a half penny. And the provenance of this coin is unbeatable as well, stemming from the famous Quartermaster collection. Graded by NGC as MS63, it sold at auction for $540,000. Subscribe to WNN and consider watching a video about the highlights from the previous year's New York International Sale next. For the world numismatic news, I am Numismanting. Thank you for watching. Keep collecting and have a fantastic day.